Sup, my juicy nude is red. Why does my eye look so red? Oh my god. Guess I'm in Latvian mood because of the colors on the flag. Red and white. Get it? Today we're gonna rate and react to the easy entry from Latvia. But first, let's take a look at the phrase of the day. Which is ciao. And no, it's not a farewell, it's not saying bye as we usually do. Like in any other language, we usually just say ciao. Interestingly, that's one way of saying hello to a Latvian person. So imagine how it can be meeting a Latvian friend. Oh my god, I haven't seen you for so long. Hello, how have you been? Oh my god, hi. Ciao. What? This year's representative is called Samantha Tina. She's 30 years old, was born in Latvia, and also tried her luck in 2013 and 2017 at the Lithuanian pre-selection, but didn't succeed until now. So let's start by reacting to the Latvian entry of this year. I gotta say that I have seen the first castings when the first round of Supernova where there were like roughly about 20 artists and I gotta say I, I saw so many terrible artists who couldn't even sing at Supernova. I haven't seen much from it so let's go and see how the final version will probably look like at Eurovision in Rotterdam. Yeah, okay. Woo. Supernova Utske Ditti Snapsat, whatever that means. So she performed last that night, that's what I know. Quiet. Oh my god. What is happening? What are these girls wearing? What's that in the hands? Is that a bottle? Oh! It's pretty strong and I have a thing for red colors. I love everything which is red. Latvia usually keeps everything about the staging red and her dress is red. Oh my god, I love red so much. Oh, she improved. What's going on with these girls with the blue helmets? Yes, you're growing stronger with your voice, Samantha. Yes. Damn, I love the building up. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And give me the drop. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Is she having a seizure? <laughs> I love it. It's so entertaining. Seriously, I mean, I've heard it before and listening to it again, she has improved so, so much. I prefer it way more than the studio version. It's awesome. Damn! I wanna see her dancing again. I wanna see, like, going nuts, having a seizure. That, I love that part. I wonder if they will use the bottles, the spray thingy, or whatever it is. And what's the meaning behind that? <laughs> Seizure Samantha coming. There we go. Woohoo! Oh, no Seizure Samantha. They're using the spray. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, yes. This is Eurovision. Oh my god, look how, how, how she's slaying the stage. It's like the stage belongs to her. She knows what she wants. Oh my god, she's singing flawlessly. It's such a hard song. Look. Yes, give me the drop. <laughs> she is feeling it, Samantha. Damn. <laughs> yep. She knows how to move. Oh, we got the red color again. Yes! That was fucking awesome. Great show. All right. That was Latvia. That was Samantha with the song still breathing. I would be lying if I said that she didn't improve. Well, freaking done. So as I said, I love the color red so much. Yes, it's just the color, but I don't know. The color has something special and it's it has such a nice contrast that yes, you could say that it's too red and maybe it's too much. Well, actually I thought so from last year, Switzerland, when Luca Henny had red all over his face. <laughs> I thought that was too much, but this performance, I really think it fits because it's just a, <laughs> it's such a freaky and weird song. 
it is so weird in its own way. And you can have a high advantage in Eurovision if your song is weird. I mean, it's proven that weird stuff is more likely to get a higher result in Eurovision. And this is definitely weird standing out, whatever you call it. She can be so proud performing this flawlessly because it's this kind of song where you can totally fuck it up because you have to hold this very long note, the build up, where she sings, na, 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 na. <laughs> See, I'm, even, I'm even having trouble. It's insane how she managed to do that and she did it several times. I'm seriously surprised how she slayed those notes. As I said, I really love the build up part, the bridge, I think you would say. Though the drop isn't like the best choice to my mind, I think it could have been a different drop this one sounds a little basic, but still goes well with it because she's still having her, her seizure and it's still <laughs> something very unique, I would say. And also, what was going on with the background singers? Kind of suspicious, interesting, mysterious, weird. It is all combined. I want to know the meaning behind it. What does it mean, the spraying thing? I mean, she's still breathing. Does she need the spray to breathe or does she pray to spread the legs? What? Anyway, I think... The constellation, it worked. Three women with this weird thingy, Samantha slaying the stage. She really did, she really did a great performance. You had the feeling that she filled the stage, that she knows she's on the stage, she knows what she does, she's comfortable, which made it seem really professional. She was set out so much with this song. Just imagine it, a ballad right in front of the song and right after the song, and then in between there's Samantha. <laughs> Yep, she will stand out for sure. <laughs> it's a very entertaining song. Of course, I also have a bit contra, just as I mentioned before. I think the drop could have been a different one. It's not my personal taste. It's still good, as I said, but yeah, I think it could have been better. Additionally, I don't think it's a winner song. I think it will have a good result, but I don't see the song as a winner, which is fine, of course. I mean, I, I still think that it will pass the semi-final. I hope so, because she just brings another bop. And we Eurovision fans love that. So I took a look at all other competing acts from the final and also from the very first casting. And there was really one song which I really, really loved. And there was a high chance that this song would have been my all-time favorite of the whole competition, which really touched me and I could just feel connected in some way. It was Madara with Mara Seme, I think it was called. And it has... It was so unique. People would say, too good for Eurovision, and I, I kind of agree because I just loved it so much. But unfortunately, she didn't make it to the final. My favorites in the final were, I really liked Tridomite. It sounded a bit generic, but I liked the, ah, ah, you look good, look good, like. <laughs> I really liked that. And oh my god, did, did you see the Heartbeats girl? She was kind of scaring me. She was like getting really close into the camera, and she was like feeling it, and I was just kind of scared of her. But hey, during the whole final, I think they made the best choice for Eurovision. Still Briefing has definitely the highest chances at succeeding the semi-final and making it to the final. So let's take a look at the rating. So let's start by rating her vocals. As I said, the song could have been really a mess and could have been saved. And in this case, she saved it by her voice. Her vocals are really strong. You can just hear that she is confident with her voice and that her voice is not shaky or anything. So I cannot give it any other but nine points, really. She did very, very well with her voice. The performance was also pretty good. She did the dance thingy. She knew how to dance, which was, of course, looking a bit like a seizure, but how, how else can you dance with this song? To me, it looked a bit like a dank meme. Like it was <laughs> zoomed in, very red, what only missed was the distortion audio, which goes like really loud and it would have been a dank meme. It's really, really funny. The station was also pretty good, as I said. Red, 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 yes! There could have been maybe something added or something extra. Maybe the background singers could have done more or she could have interacted with them, but of course it's extremely hard to focus on a song like this with the voice and interact with the background singers. Some Eurovision stars can do it, but this is really, really difficult. But still, it was a good staging, I think. So I would give it solid eight points. And last but not least, the song itself. I gotta say, when I first heard the song, the studio version, I was like, mm, okay, okay, I've heard this before. Mm, okay, I don't really like it. I would have given it probably five points, pretty average. But then I saw this and I was like, what? That's rare that the live version is better than the studio version. So from five points, it got way up to eight points. 
really well deserve Samantha. So the last question is, is this song suitable for Eurovision? I do think so. It's weird in its own way. It's a bop. It's bringing you into a good mood. The dance is hilarious. It's Eurovision material. Definitely. And of course, I have a very special rant version for the song. Here you go. How many brain cells did I kill? I'm sure a lot. I'm sorry for that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching so much and I wish you a beautiful day.